Welcome to Fireside Chat. My name is Sai. If you're new to my channel, I talk about how you can save money, budget, and invest money better to achieve financial independence. Check out my other videos about how to calculate your financial independence numbers, how much money you should save in your emergency fund, and what low cost index funds to invest to achieve financial independence. In one of my debt free journey videos, I talked about how my net worth went from negative $250,000 to almost $600,000 today. In this video, let's talk about the psychology of money and what is stopping so many people from achieving financial independence and retire early. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, nor am I a psychologist. My channel and its videos are for pure entertainment purposes only. Let's talk about the mentality to retire early. So what does it mean to you to retire early? What is your vision to retire early? Let me share mine. I want to spend more time with my family without worrying about working for an income. Time is too precious for me. I want to live in my home for free because I have so much cash flow coming in from my other rental properties to pay for my mortgage. I want to be able to attend a baseball game on a Wednesday, hockey game on a Thursday, a football game on a Sunday without worrying about going to work the next day. I want to travel the world without worrying about paying for my vacation expenses. I want to be able to book a plane to get to Hawaii next weekend without worrying about taking time off from work. I want to continue to grow my YouTube channel and continue documenting and vlogging my financial independence journey. When I hit my financial independence number, I want to continue to do that and share my experience with you. Wouldn't it be nice if you no longer have to rely on your 9 to 5 job to pay for your expenses? The normal retiring age in the US is 65. Retiring early means that you're retiring in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s. I would like to retire before the age of 45. Is it possible? Yes, as long as I stick to my budget, savings rate, and aggressively investing. It is entirely possible. It is almost impossible for me to live comfortably if I choose to retire at the age of 62 just on the social security income. I want to be able to retire without ever worrying about money. This is why before I hit my fire number, I want to work my butt off and save as much money as I can. And when I hit that fire number, I want to enjoy life, I want to enjoy my family, I want to enjoy what I do best. Let's talk about the 5 most common money avoidance and excuses. Excuse number 1, I don't know where to start. I've been there, trust me. This was me when I started the debt free journey. I didn't know where to begin other than watching the Dave Ramsey show. When I finally finished my baby step three, which is the, to save three to six months in emergency fund, I realized that the rest of the baby steps were not for me. I didn't want to only invest 15% of my income towards retirement, and I didn't want to pay off my mortgage early because I can use that money to invest more and grow more when the interest rate is so low. If you're a Dave Ramsey fan, please do not attack me. This is just my personal opinion. I think his baby step program from baby steps one through three are completely legit. It's worked out well for me. However, from baby steps four through six, in order for me to achieve baby step seven, which is to retire early for me, it's just not ideal. I don't think I can do it as, as fast as I wanted to if I just follow the Dave Ramsey plan. Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So I started to invest in my financial education by buying books and watching YouTube videos. Check out some of the YouTube videos that I've been following. So people like Ryan Scribner, Graham Stephan, Financial Education by Jeremy LeFay. I'm sorry, Jeremy, if I butchered that. Jeremy LeFay, Aman and Christina, who are on Our Rich Journey, they achieve financial independence in eight years. I don't want you to copy exactly what they've been doing to achieve financial independence. I want you to have your own plan to save your money, invest, and budget. I want you to create your own investing principles. Everyone's situation is different. If that means you want to invest your entire nest egg into cryptocurrencies, that's fine by me as long as you have a plan. If you want to create your own wealth with just real estate properties, but as long as you have a plan, I say go for it. After watching this video, I want you to start doing your own research and create your own financial independence retire early journey. There is no reason for you to delay this. Again, time in the market always beats time in the market. 
Why wait? Excuse number two. I don't earn enough to reach my goals. So this is common, and you're not wrong. If you don't earn enough, you're not gonna be able to retire early. There's no way around it. First, you need to assess how much money you make every year, and then reduce your expenses. Second, you need to ask yourself where you would like to retire when you hit that fire number. What city, what town, what state, or if you wanna stay where you're at, go for it. I am living in Las Vegas and I'm planning on retiring in Vegas, but I wanna grow my fire number more, so in case I wanna move somewhere else to retire, then that's what I'm gonna do. However, it might be enough for you to live on $60,000 a year, let's say you're in, in Las Vegas like me, but that might not be enough for you to retire in California or New York. Third, find a way to increase your income. I don't need to tell you that you need to find side hustles or ask for a promotion. You already know this if you're underpaid. What I want you to do is get out of your comfort zone. We don't like to try new things because we don't like failure. We're scared of rejections. We become anxious when we move from one city to another. Remember, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Excuse number three. My spouse and I do not combine our finances. Now, many people have different opinions about this, but this is what I believe in. So if you're just a boyfriend and girlfriend living together, I believe you should continue to divide your finances. However, if you're married, remember you guys are married in one. When you're on the debt-free journey or the financial independence journey, you're not supposed to be doing it alone. You want to grow wealth with your loved ones or your family to create generational wealth. If your spouse has $50,000 in student loan debt, that's not just that person's problem. That's both of you guys' problem. You guys are married, so you guys need to work on it together. You can also, together, set money aside for the holidays, entertainment, travel. You can also save for the retirement together. Combining your investment can grow your wealth a lot quicker. It's not supposed to be a competition. It, can you imagine if your spouse is making $50,000 a year and you're making $60,000 a year, your spouse is only contributing 10% of the retirement because that uh, he or she has more expenses, more debt, and you're contributing more because you're debt free. Uh, what's the purpose of marriage if you guys are just separating everything? One last thing, you don't have to talk about money every single day. It's stressful, I get it. You guys can set up a, a family meeting once a week or twice a month and on the paydays and just say, hey, let's sit down together, you and me, let's talk about it every two weeks, what the plan is gonna be, what's our budget looking like, and this is our plan to tackle the debt. This way you can relieve some stress and you can be less overbearing. Excuse number four, I spend money to feel better about myself. I was guilty about this one. I had a spending problem when I went through a divorce and, and that's because I was mad at myself and I was mad at the world. Quickly realized that spending all this money did not make me feel better um, and instead put me in over $100,000 in consumer debt and my credit score was at 580. I, it didn't make me feel better, it just made it worse. It's okay to pay yourself first. You just gotta have a plan for it. I didn't have a plan when I got myself into $100,000 in debt. I just borrow money and spent money. And I borrow money and spend more money. I never even had a plan to do, uh, to pay it off. You gotta have a budget to have, uh, to give yourself permission to buy whatever it is that you want. Lastly, stop keeping up with the Joneses. And, Sorry, no offense if your last name or your first name is Jones. Nobody's going to care if you bought a $80,000 Tesla or a BMW. So you can just post it on Facebook or Instagram to get that like. And also you should hit that like button if you find this video very valuable to you. I want you to buy these things for you, for yourself. Don't buy these things just to impress other people. Okay, if you really want to buy a $500 designer purse, I say go for it as long as you have a plan. I mean, someday I want to buy a $10,000 Rolex, but right now it's definitely not the right time for me to purchase one because I want to continue investing. But when I, when I retire, why not? As long as I have a plan for it, right? Excuse number five. I don't know how to budget because it is too hard. You're right, it is too hard. It's very, very hard. But if you don't want to live paycheck to paycheck anymore, you need to get started on it. I don't think people are lazy to budget. I think it's the lack of knowledge. 
And I'm gonna share with you some of the resources that I've found on how to budget easily and free. Do you know where your money is going every paycheck and how, when the money is coming in? You gotta set the goals and you gotta have the plan on how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to save your money, and how much money you need to invest. Aren't you tired of living paycheck to paycheck and your checking account is hitting zero dollars before your next paycheck? I've been there, trust me, I was so sick and tired of it. You don't have to be an Excel spreadsheet genius to create a budget spreadsheet. There are so many free websites that let you create your own budget. It is so easy to do. And I am not sponsored by any of these websites. First, I want you to check out mint.com. I've been using it for several years. You can link your bank accounts to Mint and it will track every transaction made on your checking, savings, investing, and credit cards. The Honeydew app is also great. The Honeydew app is great for couples where you can manage money together. You can track all of your accounts on separate devices. You can also coordinate paying bills together. The Every Dollar app is the Day Ramsey app. I've used this before and it is super easy to use. I set up my budget in less than 15 minutes with this app. If you would prefer to create your own spreadsheet, you can YouTube Excel tips for budget or use the budget templates on Microsoft Excel. Thank you so much for watching my video. Comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on money avoidance and excuses. I will post a new fire video every Sunday at 9am. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more fire videos.